2018 was nearly as good as 2017 was for gaming. Sony and Nintendo continue their battle to deliver the best exclusive game experience for the PS4 and Switch, while both platforms continue to have great support from third-party and indie developers, which I suppose can technically be third-party as well. And Microsoft with their Xbox, well, they're doing their thing, I guess. While this won't be an extensive end-all be-all list of the best 2018 games, here are my personal favorites of the year. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee are reimaginings of the original Game Boy Pokemon games, specifically the yellow version. It does offer some new elements that differentiate it not only from the original games, but from the entire series, like no random battle encounters, motion controls inspired from the Pokemon Go app, and a slightly modified storyline most of which I found were done for the better. It felt fresh enough that I continue to spend time playing this, and serves as a good initial introduction to the franchise on the Switch while we wait for the next core series installments of Pokemon set to release in 2019. The fully remade music is refreshing, yet true to form that adds a good amount of nostalgia, and there are still enough elements that you can make it as competitive or as simple as you want. I also really enjoyed playing with the Pokeball Plus, although Nintendo does lose some brownie points here for making Mew practically a paid DLC item. Insomniac did a fantastic job giving new life to the Spider-Man video gaming franchise by really making you feel like Spider-Man. In all seriousness, it really was very well made, although the initial hype did indeed die down a bit after the first few weeks, but that could mainly be due to a crowded release season in the fall. The graphics were really nice, and the mechanics were expertly made. The running up the walls feature was a genius move, as it prevented loss of momentum, and I spent a ton of time swinging around New York City at top speed. It's just that fun and fluid. Combat was also well made, and the variety of suits and gadgets really let you approach each challenge in your own style for the most part. The world of New York City was full of life, and it's pretty funny to interact with people on the street as you walk around in your suit. The story was also fresh, as you didn't get forced into yet another origin story, playing as an older Peter Parker, but still gave the character some solid development, in particular through some of the side missions, like the Black Cat and Harry side missions for example. My only complaint was just that that some of those side missions did get a bit repetitive, but it's really more of a minor note for me. The highly anticipated Wild West cowboy game from Rockstar did not fail to deliver. As a prequel to the 2010 action-adventure game, Rockstar did a fantastic job of keeping me as a player on the edge of my seat, following the story of Arthur Morgan and the Vanderlyn Gang. The playable world is massive, beautifully scenic, and most importantly, full of life and things to do. I'll try to keep this relatively spoiler-free, but fair warning. The main story is gripping throughout most of the game, with some exceptions towards the end as missions get a little repetitive, mostly devolving exclusively into shootouts versus the variety of activities the first half provided. The only other thing about the main story I had some gripes about was the amount of time spent following someone on a horse going from point A to point B, but oftentimes it did offer further character development, so overall, something I could live with. The music, boy, I can't rave enough about that. miles we walk, the many things we learn, the building of a shrine, only just to burn, that's the way We are not criminals. We are outlaws. I see clearly that your world is not a world from which one can escape. It really does add an incredible layer of immersiveness, and the original piece by D'Angelo was such a mwah, nice touch, especially as a hobbyist musician myself. Hunting, fishing, bounty hunting, notable NPCs scattered throughout the world ensures that you always have something to do. Definitely make sure to read Arthur's notebook as you progress though, as it adds more world development that could easily be missed. The online mode has been relatively successful, although Rockstar did play it smart by calling it a beta, despite some complaints about the in-game currency as, surprise, they try to milk that cash cow, similar to GTA V Online. 
Dragon Quest, a massively popular franchise in Japan, eclipsing even Final Fantasy in popularity, had its North American release of the 11th installment this year, released in Japan in 2017. It hasn't quite found the same success overseas, but still has a dedicated following in the US, myself being one of them. However, this is the first home console release for the series since Dragon Quest VIII back on the PS2, and has gained itself a little more popularity for a JRPG in the West. That being said, it is a classic turn-based combat RPG, and while it's not quite a casual 20-hour playthrough, I'm at around 80 plus hours, as a big fan of the franchise myself, it might be the best installment of the series. The story is a classic quest of a protagonist out to save the world from certain doom, but offers some great character variety, with nicely paced development for each of them. Definitely more of a novel than a short story, but the payoff is worth it. Just ignore the less than impressive voice acting, and you'll be okay. Watcha! You here for a bit of R&R &R like everyone else, eh? R&R? Ha! &R? <laughs> Not likely. We've things to be... Seriously? You ain't an Octagonian to let your hair down? What else would anyone... Definitely a must-buy for JRPG fans, especially if you're a fan of the franchise at all, or if you've ever played any of the original three. Just trust me on that. No 2018 list could be complete without Smash. Even though it just released in early December 2018, it's smashing records, having sold more than 3 million copies in its first 11 days. It makes sense, as pretty much anyone and everyone I knew with the Switch either had already owned it, or they just got it for the holidays. With the largest character pool ever in a Smash game, and more coming in 2019 as a DLC, I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. The controls are super tight, and the new mechanics around dodging and blocking is proving to make for a more aggressive playstyle, which I really love. Now, it can get a bit chaotic, especially when you're playing with 8 players on particularly smaller stages, but isn't that half the fun anyways? All 29 current stages have their own unique feel to them, making battles feel fresh every time. Considering the versatility of the Switch, it's really awesome to easily play with friends on a single console using the Joy-Cons, although, in my opinion, it is an inferior playing experience compared to using the Pro Controller or one of the GameCube-style controllers. However, I will take that versatility every time, you just can't beat the flexibility of having your Switch on you and quickly challenging some punk who is smack-talking you about their Smash skills. Online, on the other hand, just straight sucks. Although that's not really Smash's fault, and more of a problem with Nintendo Online, but that's a whole other topic. And for my favorite game of the year. It should probably be to no surprise seeing this game at the top of anyone's list this year, considering it just won Game of the Year at the Game Awards on December 6th, and with good reason, as a soft reboot to the franchise brings a bit more of a mature and story-driven approach to Kratos and his new son, Atreus. As an earlier 2018 release, it really did hold up with all the other great games released in the same year. The story is gripping from the very beginning, and I can't praise the voice acting and character developments enough. Corey Barlog and the rest of the team at Sony Interactive's Santa Monica Studio really took it to the next level with this game. I personally have it ranked up there with my favorite games of all time, along The Last of Us, Final Fantasy VII, Chrono Trigger, Ocarina of Time, and, hot take, I really think it would have beat out Breath of the Wild if they released in the same year. The pacing was perfect, the game itself, which sometimes can get lost in the reviews, was fluid, and the combat was brutal, difficult, but fair. I played it on the Give Me a Challenge difficulty, the level right below God of War, and it really was a challenge. Those damn Valkyries. But it never felt unfair. I had to think about my approach to battles. The enemies gave you enough combat style variety that you had to think about each of them differently, and battle just felt organic. I don't usually care about 100%ing a game, but I definitely had to plant them this one. The Nordic mythology feel of this game, a departure from the Greek mythology from previous installments, was very well done and even gave older fans of the franchise enough of a nod while remaining accessible to newcomers to the franchise. The music here was also masterfully done, and my personal favorite aspect, the single no-cut camera was just perfection. From the opening menu, there are no cuts to the camera through the end game credits, and it just adds such a unique immersiveness. It really did feel like a single camera person following Kratos in that third person angle. There's a great cinematic experience that comes with this while not forgetting about the game. 10 out of 10, I cannot wait for the sequel. Overall, it's a great time for video games and video gamers. 
Crash, Spyro, Shadow of the Colossus, Mega Man X, Octopath Traveler, Mario Party, Mario Kart, Black Ops 4, Celeste, Dead Cells, Into the Breach, there is something out there for everyone. From home consoles, PC gaming, mobile gaming, and despite the monetization of free to play via microtransactions and DLC, there are plenty of AAA titles along with indie developers and remakes and remasters of old games that leave me excited for what's to come in 2019. Let me know what were your personal favorites of the year and any games you are particularly looking forward to in 2019.